Hey, it's Evan. Welcome to another Dawn Electric video. Today you join me in my garage because yesterday I was finally able to get level one home charging for my ID4. And if you live in an apartment or a condo, I'm going to show you a way that you might be able to get your management company to install level one charging in your garage. So this started about a month ago. I was hanging out in my garage, as most men do, and I happened to notice that on my wall, the only outlet I had that provided electricity was a old two-prong outlet. And uh, funny enough, I noticed that my garage door opener, which is an electric garage door opener, was plugged into that two-prong outlet. And uh, on closer inspection, I happened to notice that that outlet was an ungrounded outlet. Now, how did I know that? Well, it was an old two-prong outlet. It looked like it probably came with the building. The building was built in, I think, the late 50s. And uh, this was what was plugged into that old outlet. And after looking at it, it didn't, to me, look like it was uh, something that was plugged into a grounded outlet. And so I contacted my apartment management company and I let them know, hey, that outlet up there where my garage door is plugged into, probably not grounded. And uh, I actually looked at my municipality's fire code and I found out that electric garage door openers need to be plugged into three prong grounded outlets in the garage. It's a safety hazard, it's a fire hazard. So I wrote them a message indicating that, that it's out of code. And about three weeks later, they actually made a, a work order for an electrician to come over and change out that outlet to what we have now, and this happened yesterday, which is this right here. Let me try to zoom in. A nice, juicy, GFCI-protected, three-prong grounded outlet where my garage door is now plugged into. Now, what does this mean in terms of charging? Well, it means that my level one charger, which came with my car, now can be plugged into that uh, grounded outlet where my garage door is now plugged into and the indicator light now turns green. When I first tried to plug in my level one cable into that old two prong outlet, the indicator light on the charger turned red and it wouldn't charge my car. And I think that that was because it was an ungrounded outlet, which a level one cable isn't going to allow for. So I couldn't charge my car. But now when I plug in my car with that yellow level one cable that came with the car, this is what happens, thankfully. I'm just gonna use the level one cable that came with my ID4. You can see it's just a simple J1772 plug. It's about like a 20 foot cord or so that came with it. I'm gonna plug it into the J1772 port on the car. Note that I haven't done anything inside the car to enable this. It's just a plug and play situation. It is immediately green. Let's check on the inside of the car to see the speed that we're getting. You can see the green charging indicator, which means we are hooked up. However, we're not getting any juice, and I think I know the reason why. Last night I set my charging limit to 60% and we reached it. So let's slide this to 80%. And we'll see what happens. There we go. There's the charging indicator now starting to move on the dash. And now it says two miles each hour at one kilowatt. So just for reference at this speed, uh, last night I tested this and I was able to increase my state of charge from 50 to 60% in eight and a half hours. So that basically works out for the ID4 that I'd be able to charge from 0% to 100% in about four days, just a little bit less than four days because it would come out to just less than 100 hours. Again, that's not fast. I'm not really looking for fast when I'm using this level one charger at home. I'm just looking for convenience. Now, convenience will mean different things to different people. For me, convenience means when I come home from a long trip or I come home from work, I don't care if my state of charge is one or 2% now, because I'll know that if I do come back at that low of a state of charge, I don't have to run out to my local DC fast charger just to bump my state of charge up to a level that allows me to do whatever shenanigans I need to do the next day. Now I can come home, even if I'm at a state of charge of two or 3%, I can just plug in in the garage and slowly work my way up uh, through the night. And this is something that you can do if you live in an apartment or a condo to get your management company to either fix an old ungrounded two-prong outlet 
uh, or to install one altogether so that you can do level one charging at home because even level one home charging is a big help. And of course, the thing that goes along with all of this is that your apartment lease cannot explicitly state that you cannot EV charge in your garage. Oh, and just to sort of address potential comments where people might say, and who's gonna pay for this electricity for your EV in your apartment? My uh, monthly rent was increased by almost 10% about a month before filming this video and getting charging. So the answer to that, it's me. Secondarily to that, I will include a couple links in the description below uh, centered on how apartment owners can get subsidies from the government to install EV charging in their apartments. This is an inevitability because California is moving to an all electric vehicle future by 2035. So apartment owners, it's in their best business interests to grab a hold of these types of subsidies to help their uh, tenants who have EVs charge. It's good for business. If you found anything helpful about this video, please be sure to like and share and subscribe and everything. I'll see you guys next time.